reports came out stating Tyson Fury could be upgraded to French Fries champion in order to take on Anthony Joshua. For the people that might not be informed and wondering what is the cause of this decision or a future possible decision, well after Tyson Fury came out announcing the two fight deal with Anthony Joshua, he pretty much already has his next three fights set. One with Deontay Wilder trilogy fight if he's successful then of course he has back-to-back -back Anthony Joshua fights. Which means Tyson Fury is not going to be able to fight his mandatory anytime soon, which is due February 2021 versus the one and only Dylan Yu White. Now there's multiple ways to resolve the issue without going the French fries route toward McDonald's. One way the issue could be resolved is by step aside money. However, who are we kidding? I could tell you right now, telling you why is not about to take the step aside money. Therefore, Eddie Hearn have to sweeten the deal and some way somehow promise him the winner of Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua rematch on contract. That's pretty much by the only way Eddie Hearn could get Dylan White to accept the step aside money, especially when he's not delivering with his promises time and time again when it comes to Dylan White. In a way, he's trying to set him up in the UFC in order to make room for the bigger plan and the bigger picture in boxing. Slick Eddie, Slick Eddie, we peep what you do. You will mistake Eddie being from New York the way he stay hustling these fighters from the UK. Eddie officially from BK, only if he stopped the nonsense at times. Furthermore, another way to resolve the issue is by actually applying the rule that states a unification trumps a mandatory any given day of the week. However, the problem with that, I don't know how realistic that is since the WBC done dragged the issue so much that Dylan U. White now is actually suing the WBC and has been confirmed by the WBC president, Suleiman. Therefore, I'm really curious, as soon as I drop this video, I'm looking forward to see all these Dylan White fans and these UK fans that was accusing Deontay Wilder of ducking Dylan White. I'm looking forward to see all these Dylan White fans and these UK fans calling out Tyson Fury for ducking Dylan White. And don't try to justify it by bringing up logical reasons because we could care less. They flipped the script when it was Deontay Wilder. It was Dylan White avoiding Wilder. And we pretty much know that because he was also avoiding Luis Ortiz. However, they were stubborn like a dog, ignoring all the receipts and all the facts that trump all their opinions. Now, let's see y'all give Tyson Fury the same work. Keep the same energy. Don't flip. Be stubborn just like a dog. And please, don't try to justify why Tyson Fury shouldn't be fighting Dylan your wife. I mean, shall we? We all know the answer. Y'all missing the point, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. For the meantime, the WBC came out. The World Boxing Corruption Organization stating, we ruling out Tyson Fury French Fries title on the line for AJ. Then shortly after, Bob Arum came out stating, and I quote, nobody is asking the WBC to make Tyson Fury a French Fries champion. But if Dylan White pursues this idea of fighting Tyson Fury before he fight Wilder again and then Joshua, that will be the way I think the WBC will go. End of the quote. Now, first of all, that's completely bullcrap. Mind my, my language, that's completely wild bullcrap. Tyson Fury shouldn't be getting this French fries title before the Deontay Wilder trilogy fight. No damn way. Now, after, at least you can make sense out of that. But before so, it makes zero sense because the mandatory ain't due till 2021. So why make him the French fries title champion 
where he could win the title but can't lose it even if he gets knocked out in the first round. So what is the point of Wilder knocking him out in a trilogy fight but he can't regain his title? That makes zero sense if Dillian White mandatory ain't due till 2021. That's first of all. Now second of all, for the AJ situation, it makes sense if they trying to make the biggest UK fight of all time that can't happen in the UK because Tyson Fury relinquished his license all thanks to Care Foot who sticked his foot up in old media ass and had Tyson Fury running from justice. Now how ironic is that that the biggest fight in the UK in history can't even happen in the UK. The irony of it all. With that being said, if everything goes as planned, and Tyson Fury and AJ are both successful on their next upcoming bouts, where they plan to clash 2021, however white is the roadblock, then it's understandable to make the bigger fight, money-wise, legacy-wise, and all of the above, over Dillian White. So if the only possible way to make the fight happen is through a french fries title, even though I'm pretty sure they could work something out, then that's on AJ. Because AJ three belts are going to be on the line. However, the WBC belt, if Tyson Fury becomes the french fries champion, that's not a champion, that's not a belt, according to the WBC, where it's not going to be on the line, where if Tyson Fury gets knocked out, he's not going to lose the belt because it's a trophy, then AJ is losing in this situation because he's going to fight Tyson Fury. However, he's not going to win the WBC title. So what is the point of becoming undisputed? I get the point of Tyson Fury is still going to be recognized as the champion going into the fight, but like I pointed out early on, even if AJ sparks Tyson Fury, he won't win the belt. So what's the point of the WBC belt, period? It's not even a belt. It's not even on the line. However, peep this. If Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua, then he gets to take every single title that Anthony Joshua possesses or has slash owns at the moment. Now, do you all see the corruption we dealing with? And to make matter worse, it's actually AJ that's dealing with this corruption slash predicament since it's going to backfire on AJ and it's gonna benefit Tyson Fury. Again, the fighter on the hope list against another fighter on the coincidental list Therefore, if I'm Eddie or AJ, I would definitely object this idea. And obviously, Deontay Wilder, I'm pretty sure he 100% against this. But Tyson Fury is going to welcome this with open arms. You tell him he don't have to fight mandatories? I mean, he didn't even fight one mandatory no damn way. After he beat Klitschko when he took steroids, or even now. However, you never hear these fans call out Tyson Fury. For not fighting his mandatory. I mean, Deontay Wilder had 10 title defenses. However, Tyson Fury have zero title defenses, even though he a two-time world champion. How ironic is that? Roy Jones stated, in order to be a great fighter, you have to defend your titles against the young hungry lions on the come up. Wilder did it 10 times, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, the highest, did it 18 times. Joe Lewis, I believe, did it 25 times. However, Tyson Fury did it zero times. That's why he cannot be considered a great. And of course, since he cheated in the past, and that's a fact, facts over emotion, that completely disqualifies Tyson Fury from becoming a great fighter. The two don't go together. You can't cheat and take steroids and blame it on a wild boar that's extinguished and still want to be recognized as a great fighter. 
So, like I said earlier, for the people that claimed Wilder avoided white, which we know that wasn't the case. However, they wanted to hate on this fighter on the coincidental list so bad they started making up a bunch of rubbish. Is that the best y'all could do, mates? If you know better, do better. Now, the million dollar question to you all. If Tyson Fury fought Dylan Y. White when he was supposed to, when the WBC mandated him to fight Dylan Y. White right after Wilder vs. Fury first fight, after the first clash, when he went all the way to ESPN, we wouldn't be having this issue as we speak. Tyson Fury completely avoided the fight and Dylan White was pursuing the fight heavily. However, Tyson Fury elected to fight two unknown fighters instead. He fought Swartz, I believe his name was. Then he fought Wallen, two unknown fighters we never heard of. He was too busy cherry picking instead of fighting the competition he was supposed to be fighting in order to secure the Wilder and AJ fights in the future without any problem. However, Tyson Fury fought Tom Swartz, a fighter at the time who was ranked around number 63 in the heavyweight division. Absolutely ridiculous. It was a scandal almost when he fought him. Then he fought Wallen, a low ranked heavyweight which narrowly went down as cherry picking going wrong. So to think about it, Tyson Fury actually avoided Dylan Y. White if we all being honest. Obviously I'm freestyling this video off the dome. And now to think of it, Fury actually avoided Dylan Y. White. However, you don't see these decaps, the dumb casual ass fans push the issue of Fury ducking Dylan Y. White. However, they tried to criticize Deontay Wilder on the other hand. How idiotic is that? When Deontay Wilder fought Luis Ortiz and Tyson Fury back to back, he fought Luis Ortiz when he didn't even have to. When Luis Ortiz was undefeated and was being avoided, by AJ and many more heavyweights. Matter of fact, I would love to see Luis Ortiz versus a Tyson Fury fight. Skill for skill is up there, right? So Deontay Wilder knocked him out twice. He fought Tyson Fury twice and knocked out his mandatory at the time, Brazil, who challenged Dylan White and Dylan White elected not to face him, just like he elected not to face Luis Ortiz. But these decafs, and a lot of UK fans disappointingly and idiotically accuse Deontay Wilder of avoiding Dylan White. Even though he fought bigger, riskier fights against better opponents that were undefeated, such as Luis Ortiz, and Tyson Fury. But regardless of the fact that Dillian White even failed for taking steroids and got suspended at the time, they still accuse Deontay Wilder of avoiding Dillian White. I mean, the audacity. Dillian White, the same guy that got sparked by AJ. So you could pretty much picture what Wilder will do to him. He gonna put him on a meme pretty much. But with the same breath, they not gonna call Tyson Fury the man who actually avoided White and there's a good case of him avoiding White just like I pointed out early on without me even trying just by laying out factual history between the two fighters. You could pretty much say Tyson Fury avoided Dylan Y. White. But the decafs will flip the script just because Deontay Wilder is from the coincidental list and Tyson Fury is from the hope list where his hope insurance cover everything, even his backtrack with the wild boar or his foretrack with the glove gate. That hope insurance better than Geico, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, let's just call a spade a spade. I mean, they love to criticize Deontay Wilder, even his resume. However, let's name 
some of Deontay Wilder's biggest names on his resume, such as Stavern, a former world champion, such as Luis Ortiz, a top three heavyweight, and Tyson Fury. He pretty much fought three that actually fought him without testing positive, such as Povekin and many more. On the other hand, who did Tyson Fury fought, if we are being honest? Klitschko and Deontay Wilder. That's pretty much it. Everything else is almost a cherry pick in between. There's good fighters here and there, just like there's good fighters on Deontay Wilder resume. The only difference between the two, when Tyson Fury got busted for steroids, he got suspended and blamed her on drugging. On the other hand, Deontay Wilder actually has 10 title defenses. Something that Tyson Fury doesn't have. Deontay Wilder is actually a super champion. Something Tyson Fury doesn't know anything about. And you could pretty much ask Klitschko that when he activated the rematch clause. Fury was nowhere to be found with a replacement opponent against Yukata instead. On the other hand, Wilder wanted to fight Pavekin. It was Pavekin testing positive. He wanted to fight Klitschko. He didn't get the opportunity like AJ and Fury. He wanted to fight AJ. We know how that went down. AJ wanted no smoke. He gave Ortiz a rematch. And he also gave Tyson Fury himself a rematch when he was coming off drug. But Wilder don't get his just due. And that's why we want to see Fury fight his mandatories and defend his title up to 10 times. Y'all saw AJ fight Ruiz and get upset out of nowhere. When you fight your mandatories, unexpected opponents surprise you. You could ask Wilder on that when he nearly upset the apple card. So boxing is the theater of the unexpected. Style make fights. I believe Luis Ortiz will give Tyson Fury a bunch of problems. That's a 50-50 fight. And we pretty much know Wilder knocked him out twice. So with that being said, I do give Tyson Fury credit for digging down against Wilder and getting the W and also for fighting Deontay Wilder and Klitschko. And last but not least, unlike these decafs, our key is pretty much objective and I speak facts, not out of emotion. If Tyson Fury fights Deontay Wilder, then AJ twice, then he's absolutely not avoiding Dylan White, especially not at this moment. In the past, you could make a good case of him maneuvering around Dylan White for the diamond belt. However, for the moment, it's absolutely business. But unlike these decafs, I could definitely differentiate between the two. So drop in the comment section below how you all feel about Tyson Fury becoming the next French Fries champion, where pretty much in order to be qualified to be a French Fries World Boxing Corruption Champion is to be a fighter on the hope list. That's the main objective. So drop your thoughts on the comment section below. Subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these decafs, aka dumb casual ass fans slash old media that don't know ish about boxing. Shout out to Dante, the entrepreneur of new media that I'm a part of. And if you a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time I post or go live on Split Decision. It's a boxing debate slash talk show where our key is the past, present, and future undisputed. Pound for pound number one when it comes to debating. You all got me feeling like the Iron Mike of debating, the most feared. I got all these decaf shook, so grow some cojones and quit eating that wild boar that's contaminated and call in. Y'all can't have me beat Floyd Mayweather record with nearly 500 and 0 with 500 KOs when it comes to debating, and none of you decafs want to put the blemish on our key record. With that being stated, shout out to all my our keys. This is the boxing hood, the boxing brotherhood, in fact. Our key stand for my brother, 
So with that being stated, to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki Ak TV every Sunday. Call in, tune in, and peace out.